3, 2, 1, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone, wherever you are. And for some ungodly reason, you still have the boredom to watch the things that I'm publishing on this channel. Our squad is in Timisoara. I'm here with Mr. Marius Mioc, author of multiple books in Romanian and at least one in English and at least one in French about the 1989 Romanian Revolution. Marius, welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Thank you. And thank you for accepting to doing this interview in English. We'll see how that goes. Uh, most of the audience, both from within this country and most of the people who will be watching this who are uh, from abroad, are 30 years old or younger. At least 55% of the audience mm -hmm. is from that demographic. So with that in mind, uh, have, a, have in mind a young man younger than 30. Mm -hmm. what, is the what was and is the 1989 Romanian Revolution? It was a fight for freedom because in was a, it? Yes, because uh, in a, the communist regime it was no freedom, mm. and uh, after uh, so many years of communism, the regime was already disqualified in the eyes of the people. It it was not popular anymore, and uh, but because it was a dictatorship, the only way to get rid of this regime was uh, through a revolution, because we don't have free election, we didn't have uh, multiple political party, uh, voting it, was... It was uh, diversity within the front. <laughs> no, yeah, you have only one, uh, uh, one uh, political movement to be uh, voted in the, revolution, in, the, in the election. It was the Front of Democracy and Socialist Unity, which in fact was controlled by the Communist Party, uh, and uh, they made this uh, movement to include some uh, religious figures which were not uh, nominally members of the Communist Party, but of course they, they cannot uh, say uh, things which are against the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. The Communist Party official ideology is atheism, and uh, this is why they don't have a nominal uh, religious figure as a member of the Communist Party, but... Uh, On their lists religious figures were able to run in for office, right? Yeah, they were able to run and on, in fact the Communist Party controlled also the churches mm -hmm. and uh, uh, were appointed uh, in uh, uh, as head of the churches only person which were favorable to the Communist regime. This was one thing that they uh, have done immediately after they took the power to purge all the all the old institution, including churches. Uh, by that could have fostered dissidents. Yes, exactly. And uh, the, all the churches, the Orthodox churches, but also uh, other churches in Romania, were also controlled by the Communist Party. Uh, at the beginning they uh, sent priests in prison if they were against communists, and they managed to took control of everything. In fact, the Communist Party had control of everything, mm -hmm. of economy, because it was state-owned economy, of, uh, of any aspect of the life of the citizen. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, uh, for example, the job that a citizen can, can achieve. Mm -hmm. If you want, uh, if you are um, uh, with university degree, then uh, you are appointed a job. Mm. Any job which is uh, a little higher in uh, the hierarchy, it was uh, appointed only with the acceptance of the Communist Party. Probably if you want to... Which, had, which meant also an impeccable file and a healthy origin. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, probably if you want to have a low rank job, you can... You could have been a dissident, right? Uh, you can be without the approval of... Uh, Communist Party, but if you want to be a little, Slightly you higher. have a better job, then you need you need uh, to be a Communist Party member. The majority of the members of the Communist Party uh, uh, were from opportunistic reason mm -hmm. to have their job, uh, a better job or a better career, and uh, of course. Uh, uh, not only the job was, uh, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, you want a house, but it's not a free market. Uh, in fact, except the people had houses 
previously of the communist regime, mm -hmm. but uh, the authorities are given houses or apartments or, yeah, to, given, right. to, to the people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you want a good apartment, you have to obey the party. Mm. If you Otherwise don't you, obey... You would it, have been sent all over the, in the rural areas or whatever. Yeah, you don't receive a good house. Uh, or uh, It's not necessary to be against the party, to be a dissident. Just when they make meetings in favor of the regime, you, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't go to that meeting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then uh, when they make... Uh, um, who can receive a house, you are skipped from the list. Mm -hmm. But not only for uh, houses, because it was a shortage of many goods. There were lists, mm -hmm. even for smaller things, like uh, Like a TV set, like a gas, like a gas tank. Like... Yeah, yeah, like a gas tank. Mm -hmm. They made lists for gas tank. Mm -hmm. They make lists from, it, uh, it was, uh, uh, color TV was very rare mm. in Romania. They just started to make some color emission mm. uh, at the end of the communist yeah, the, the regime. But, yeah. but uh, the majority of the broadcast was still uh, black and white. Mm. Uh, and With the it was of the big football matches and some party meetings. Yeah, party meetings they make colored. Yeah, and, and some of them were partly colored. Do you remember that? The partly <laughs> colored television, yeah. television <laughs> apartial color. Yeah, uh, it was a emission, emission uh, uh, a broadcast, a broadcast which part of it was color and part of it was black and white, mm -hmm. even. Yeah, the, the um, partially colored broadcast. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's literally the name of uh, the concept. You started with religious figures. The uh, revolution started also with a religious figure, a religious figure from the city of Hungarian ethnicity. Yes. Talk to us about Turkish Laszlo. Turkish Laszlo was a priest of the Hungarian Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. The Hungarian Reformed Church uh, was also controlled by the communist uh, government. Mm -hmm. All the, the bishops were uh, in line with the politics of the party. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and they would hold uh, political education within the church. Yes, right? exactly. Uh, to uh, all the discussion, public discussion in institution, were in favor of the communist uh, party, and uh, and uh, it was a habit in all institution from some time to make so-called uh, political lessons. Mm -hmm and uh, in which uh, the workers in a factory, mm -hmm. but also in uh, a church, the priests were uh, gathered at the meeting inside the, uh, and they received like a lesson of a political lesson, which is the, the official, program of, official the program of the party and they all have to agree and to say how good is the party and uh, the habit in Romania was that it's not enough to say that the party is good. The Mr. Ceausescu, which was the leader of the party, personally is very good and his wife is uh, very good. You, it World was a renowned academician, exactly. the genius of the Carpathians. <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, it was a cult of personality mm -hmm. and all the newspapers are telling how good is uh, Ceausescu, how good is his wife and in all the official meetings they need to start any person who take uh, to make a speech need to start uh, very dear and esteemed Mr. Ceausescu comrade. and very uh, comrade Ceausescu and very uh, dear and esteemed comrade Elena Ceausescu which is his wife mm -hmm. it was mandatory for them to mention both of them mm -hmm. when they start a uh, a speech in an official meeting and mm -hmm. of course only how good they are and mm -hmm. how uh, grateful the Romanian people is to have such a good leaders. Mm -hmm. This is the, the line. Uh, um, and uh, it was completely because there were no freedom of press, no freedom of discussion. Uh, the propaganda was completely cut from the reality. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it happened in reality. Mm -hmm. In uh, 
newspapers and in propaganda in everything was great everything things, was great things the were getting better Romanian, and better yeah exactly Romanian people is, was very happy mm. and of course disagreeing with that meant you're the yeah. agent okay. of the imperialists now, and Mr. Turkish in this frame you're seeing in uh, in your little book uh, the an the anti-communist Romanian revolution of 1989 written for people with little knowledge of Romania uh, that's the fifth edition so it means it was pretty well sold yeah you're saying that Mr. Turkish uh, had had problems with the authorities even before his arrival here in Timisoara uh, while he was a priest in Dej which is kind of sort of my hometown he participated in the publishing of an illegal magazine called uh, Elimpun Tuk. So uh, basically he wasn't necessarily an open dissident. Um, presumably in his uh, illegal magazine was just discussing religion that was not uh, lauding, yes. laudative of the regime. I don't, uh, I didn't read mm -hmm. that uh, magazine and I don't know exactly what he wrote there but of course publishing something which was not officially approved only this was already illegal. Mm -hmm. It only the fact that you are uh, daring to publish something without uh, official approval was something intolerable for uh, mm -hmm. authorities. Mm -hmm. And yes, Lazo Tekes was before arriving in Timisoara uh, in the list of uh, the priests with problems for the authorities, and he had problem. He was dismissed from his job in. Uh, uh, the eparchy of Cluj, mm. the bishopric mm -hmm. of Cluj. Mm. Uh, there are two the bishops. Diocese. The diocese, yes. Uh, there are two dioceses of Hungarian Reformed Church in Romania, one in Cluj and one in Oradia. Mm. But he had a connection in the Western world because his brother was in Canada mm. and uh, had good connection. And uh, there were pressure uh, uh, for, uh, from outside f for the communist uh, the regime in Romania, they, they were questioned, what happened with uh, Turkish Lazlo? Why is he... Um, Why is he unemployed? Because he remained unemployed yeah, exactly. for about and, two years. Yes, and uh, the politi uh, policy of the communist regime was to uh, cover up any dissidents. Mm. The policy was not to accept that there are people which are against the regime mm. and eventually to blame them. No, they don't exist. This mm. is the policy. Mm. Uh, uh, there were some people which, not only in Laszlo Tekes, mm. other people also uh, that they spoke against the regime and they spoke at uh, Radio Free Europe, mm. which was... Uh, they they sent time. letters to Radio Free Europe if mm. they managed to send those letters without being intercepted by Securitate. Mm. And uh, they were broadcasted there or from BBC in Romanian language and other... Uh, but in official media, those people don't exist. Mm. It was not even to blame them. Mm. To, no, they Their don't exist. Their simple existence was never acknowledged. Yeah, never acknowledged that mm. such people exist. Mm. And uh, when uh, from outside there were uh, uh, questions addressed to the official uh, Romanian authority, what happened with Lazo Tekes is he persecuted. Mm. Uh, uh, the communist authority tried to deny this. Mm. And uh, the solution they came with was to move Lado Tekes in Timisoara, which is a city which quite a small Hungarian population is below 10%, mm. because he has a reputation of a nationalist Hungarian. Mm. And they, the authority saw in a city with less than 10% Hungarian, uh, Hungarian nationalist is not right. a problem, it's mm. not really a problem. It cannot, uh, have mm -hmm. success and is not dangerous. Mm -hmm. And let's give the, him a job mm -hmm. in Timisoara as a secondary priest, mm -hmm. not as a main priest. It was another priest which was a main priest here, which was uh, with the regime mm -hmm. and under the supervision of this main priest, mm -hmm. should remain in Laszlo Tekes mm -hmm. and uh, be controlled there in this city with few Hungarians, relatively few, because being uh, 300,000 people in Timisoara, even less than 10 percent, is still some... It's still over 20,000 people, right? Yeah, that, that still is, uh, and the majority of uh, Hungarian people in Timisoara are Catholic, are not uh, Reformed. Right, right, that's exactly what I was about to say. Yes, less than 10 percent Hungarians, but even fewer than that Reformed. Yes, they so they... it will be not dangerous. The problem was that the main priest of the Hungarian 
Reformed Church died. Mm-hmm. And then Lazo Tekes remained as the... He got promoted as the... Right. He was not promoted. Ah. He wanted to be promoted because he remained. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to... took the uh, job of principal priest in Timisoara. Mm-hmm. But the bishop from Oradio, mm-hmm. which was the boss of mm-hmm. uh, Lazo Tekes, refused to give him the, the nomination priest. as main priest in Timisoara. Mm-hmm. He was still kept as a secondary priest in order to be possible for the bishop to, to appoint put, someone uh, else to appoint that was vetted by the party. And this was uh, how it started again a querel between, B, uh, between Lazo Tekes and the bishop. He, uh, Lazo Tekes had the support of the po- uh, parish in Timisoara, the people mm-hmm. from the parish council mm-hmm. in Timisoara, to be appointed as a main priest in Timisoara. But he got the, himself well liked within the community. Yeah, he get, it, it seems that he was a better priest than the previous one. Mm-hmm. What I, I discussed with people from his congregation, former congregation, and they told that uh, a lot more people came to, the, to, to his sermons when uh, mm-hmm. he started to mm-hmm. preach in the church. And this is how it started. And uh, also, it was a program of the communist regime to dismantle the small villages and uh, uh, move all the inhabitants to bigger, uh, bigger towns. Mm-hmm. Within the, those uh, odious apartment blocks? Yes, the, exactly. You're talking about the systematization program. Systematization, exactly. This was a, a project mm-hmm. of the communist regime. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lazo Tekes, with another priest, managed to... Uh, to, in a meeting of priests, which they normally should approve everything what the Communist Party say, mm-hmm. they managed to... Uh, to get those to vote against. To, no, to f- make a resolution in which they ask uh, not uh, exactly to stop the program of systematization, but to keep in mind that they make systematization to move mm-hmm. the Hungarian communities together, mm-hmm. not to split them, not to... Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit uh, against, uh, or they put some condition to the communist regime, which was something unacceptable. How can somebody uh, think that uh, they co- can can negotiate or put some condition, mm-hmm. or if if a uh, uh, church is uh, destroyed by the systematization, then a new church to be built, and something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this was also unacceptable. And then. Uh, 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 well, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, may I quote from your book? Uh, Turkish protested against the governmental plan of the rural systematization. The plan initiated by Ceausescu himself was based on the idea that it was better for the Romanian people to live in bigger villages than in smaller ones. In order to achieve this goal, many small villages were planned to be destroyed and the population to be moved in new houses or in larger settlements. The opinion of the people who were to be moved did not matter to the authorities. For them, it was inconceivable that somebody could think differently than the genius of the Carpathians himself, as the propaganda used to call uh, the re- regime. And apparently, his opposition, Turkish's opposition to this plan, exactly. made him much more famous than what you're describing also in the book, The Cultural Manifestations from 1988, which included blacklisted authors and whatnot. Those were not so popular. But the opposition to the systematization? It, it, uh, it was uh, also other things, yes. Mm-hmm. It was also... I, I don't know exactly what made him much popular, but this was one, mm-hmm. one uh, problem that he, uh, his, uh, he uh, made some plans to discuss the systematization mm-hmm. with Genotri 9. Another problem is he made uh, at his church some uh, cultural manifestation of mm-hmm. Uh, Hungarian literature in which uh, they invited people from uh, it was a theater troop mm. uh, Hungarian in Timisoara mm. student troop which uh, perform in Hungarian and they uh, recita recited recited poetry from some authors which uh, were not uh, were on the blacklist of authorities, some Hungarian authors which were on the blacklist. To be, it can be different reason to be in the blacklist of authorities, and uh, even uh, famous, there were uh, famous writers which were mm-hmm. Ended up blacklisted, blacklisted or even partially blacklisted. For mm-hmm. example, the main Romanian poet, Eminescu, mm-hmm. 
which was recognized by the Communist Party as a, the main Romanian poet, mm. but some of his writings were not available for the public, mm. or it was cannot be discussed, or it was available only in a very uh, deluxe edition, mm. very expensive, which was published by the Romanian Academy. Mm. Uh, where uh, you can find this, but in fact... And only to be discussed in small circles. In very, that it was like, not completely banning, but shadow banning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it cannot be discussed uh, what he wrote in part of his writing. And also, uh, I think... Uh, or even portions within of the same poet, uh, same, same poem. I'm thinking here about emperor and, pro and proletary and prol. Right, it was a poem that was partially discussed in schools, but partially completely haram. Yeah, it right. it was yeah, it was a very refined system of censorship in the communist era. Mm. They were complete banning, shadow banning, partially banning. You can be uh, this can this part of the writing of an author can be discussed or can be published, and this part not. You can be an uh, uh, author which uh, is cherished by the regime and, uh, and one you make some something which is wrong and then mm. you arrive in the blacklist and then not even your previous writing which were cherished were not, uh, cannot be discussed. You become unperson. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Right. And this uh, happened also with the uh, Hungarian literature. Mm. The Hungarian here in Romania probably have also the problem that they cannot have uh, normal cultural ties with the Hungary, which was mm. normal for them to have. Mm. And uh, Yeah, and at the time there were some quarrels w between the Communist Party, the Socialist Party in Hungary and the Communist Party in Romania. Exactly. Because the one in Hungary was getting more and more liberalized, they were building their uh, guillage socialism, as yes. they would call it, whereas here it was getting increasingly tighter and tighter. Yes. Uh, they were going in opposite directions, so as a result uh, yeah. there was that. So, how did the, oh, oh, this is the background, and at some point some people, they just gather in front of Laszlo Turkish's house, block the tram line, Yes, and that's the start of what okay. we now Let call... Let me give you a little bit of my background. And then the, the authorities, so uh, Laszlo Turkish should be moved from Timisoara, where he became popular and he was known, and moved in a small village, somewhere mm. in Transylvania, a small village where uh, is not important uh, what he is doing there. Mm. Of course, being controlled even there, probably mm. Securitate mm. will watch him mm. also there. And uh, the bishop of Oradio, uh, because uh, uh, the authority didn't want to say openly that they have uh, a po political grounds against Lado mm. it was just the, the bishop of Oradio appointed another priest in Timisoara, mm. and he asked Lado to move and to gi he give him a, a, a parish in a small village, to move to that small village. Mm. And Lado Tekes refused to move. Mm. And then the bishop started, mm. he sued Lado Tekes mm. to empty the apartment where he lived, which mm. was the property of the Hungarian Reform Church. Mm. Because in that apartment should come the I'm new priest. to get him evacuated. From yeah, the exactly. Right. Right. And this uh, uh, Apparently, it was nothing to do with the Communist Party, only with... It a, was a, just a civil dispute between, between the, yeah, the employer internal and the dispute, employee, right. Internal dispute. Mm. I am not going into all the details. Mm. In fact, it was a court decision mm. that uh, Lazoteke should be evacuated. Mm. And uh, he received, in December, a notice from the executor de Catoresc. From the bailiff? Bailiff, mm. from the bailiff, that he should evacuate in seven days or eight days, mm -hmm. or which else. was in uh, until 15 December, mm -hmm. or else it, he will be evacuated by force. By force. Wow. And then he told, when he had in 10 December, he had in the church the sermon, mm -hmm. and he told to all which were present, I will, uh, they, they will evacuate me in 15 December, and please come to see this injustice. Mm -hmm. This is what he told. Mm -hmm. And this is why in 15 December people started gathering uh, at Laszlo Tekes' house, and in 16 December, uh, they didn't evacuate him in 15. Mm. Uh, in 16 December came more people, 
And then, in fact, in 16 December started uh, like a revolution, if you call the revolution as a openly against the regime. Mm -hmm. Because then started clearly uh, the gathering not having, uh, uh, not being uh, centered around the problem of Laszlo Tekes, but... Uh, it became bigger than Laszlo Tekes. They started Tekesh. to shout slogans against the communist regime. Mm -hmm. uh, I was part of, uh, in 16 December, mm. in the evening, I saw from the tram, I okay, went with the tram, and I saw people gathered at uh, that, near the house of Laszlo Tekes, and I heard previously rumors that uh, is something with Laszlo Tekes. He was known because also Hungarian television made uh, some broadcast with him, and he was, uh, and uh, Radio Free Europe also spoke about him. He was known mm -hmm. that is a person, but uh, I don't really know exactly what is with him. I know he's a Hungarian priest and he spoke against the regime or not in like with the regime. There are others which spoke, mm -hmm. but in Timisoara we had him as mm -hmm. person who uh, there to criticize the regime. Mm -hmm. Not, I didn't know, because I'm not Hungarian, I didn't uh, knew at that time very m many detail mm -hmm. about him, but I, when I saw the... Uh, the people gathering there. I said, eh, it can be interesting what mm -hmm. happened here, and I descended from the tram and uh, blended in the, in, the, the in the crowd. And afterwards it started uh, the revolution. Uh, uh, I explain mm. more uh, more in detail in my books. Mm. Right. From that moment on, most of the people have probably seen, and if they haven't, the YouTube is very rich with footage. Um, the protests then become larger and larger. Then they get expanded so to Bucharest, to Sibiu, to other places. Ceausescu leaves the uh, Central Committee. Uh, the television gets taken over by the revolutionaries. Ceausescu gets executed. Then comes the National Salvation Front. So now we're uh, after the interregnum. We're somewhere in the interregnum, right? So from the death, uh, from the um, uh, desertion, I guess, of Ceausescu, December twenty-second, and all the way till the first free elections. Yes. This is the interregnum. That's the, the that's the void filled by the National Salvation Front. That's the portion that even most people in Romania don't know much about. Yeah. What happened between those, be between the In fact, dissolution uh, my opinion is that after Ceausescu fled, the communist elite understood that uh, Ceausescu cannot be supported anymore because mm. there were hundreds of thousands of people in the streets and uh, they could not oppose uh, uh, anymore to the will, will of the people. And they uh, started to think of the exit solution, a uh, B plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially those persons from the military, from the army, from the police, from the securitate, were very afraid that they followed the order of Ceausescu and shot the people. Mm -hmm. And some people were killed. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid they will be put on trial, prosecuted because they killed people mm. and uh, thought how can they avoid prosecution mm. and their solution was to find someone to take the con to take control out other than Ceausescu mm. uh, inner, uh, uh, Ceausescu's inner circle inner circle and uh, uh, to claim that uh, uh, Ceausescu, uh, Ceausescu forces are still opposing resistance mm. and they, the military, are the savior of the revolution because they are the, those who are fighting against Ceausescu forces. And they stage, uh, they found Ion Iliescu as a person which uh, uh, accepted to collaborate with them. Mm. And they stage uh, fake fightings mm. after uh, starting the in the evening. terrorists in the evening of 22 December. Mm. They stage fake fighting, claiming that uh, they are very dangerous uh, mm. Ceausescu forces, which uh, want to bring back Ceausescu in power. And they, the military, who in fact uh, tried to suppress the revolution mm. uh, previously, 
mm. are the savers of the revolution. And mm. Ceausescu uh, and Iliescu, the leader of the National Salvation Front, collaborated with them. Who were the terrorists? I think that uh, it was a stage, and not only I think this, is also the opinion of the um, General Prosecutor Office of Romania, which mm. make uh, now uh, Ion Iliescu and the other two persons were uh, sent to trial mm. and prosecuted and is an ongoing trial. Yeah, the indictment is like a very thick document. Yeah, right. uh, in which uh, also the uh, prosecutor office is telling that uh, all the terrorist was uh, in fact diversion. Mm. It was a fake fighting in order to in order to uh, to save the person which was which uh, were responsible for the killings before Ceausescu fled, mm. and the general prosecutor office tell that is also a reason uh, to hide the connection of the new power with the uh, Soviet Union. I don't mm. believe really that this is true, what, what the general prosecutor say. I don't believe uh, the, the, the connection with the uh, Soviet was so strong mm. as uh, it is uh, thought in uh, Romanian in the public now. official and even in the, in the indictment of the prosecutor office. Mm. In my opinion, the only reason for the staging of uh, fake fightings was to save persons which were responsible for the killings before 22 December. And in fact, partially it was, uh, uh, it was proved afterwards, mm -hmm. because, for example, two generals which were ministers mm -hmm. in the National Salvation Front mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. Mr. Stanculescu, Mr. Kitsak, mm -hmm. uh, were indicted and convicted mm -hmm. uh, that they participated in the killings in Timisoara. Uh, but they also participated in the fighting against so-called terrorists mm -hmm. after 22. Mm -hmm. That partially this was already uh, proved. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it was only that simple, just to get some people out of potentially going to jail. Potentially going to jail, and potentially even it was death penalty was uh, still valid. In theory, it was still a thing. Yeah, yeah and they they may thought that they can uh, end up being in front of an execution. Squad. Yeah, because this was the low death for, for mm. killing of large number of people uh, at that time. And uh, one of the things that Mr. Iliescu had done in 12 January 1990 was to abolish cancel the death to uh, abolish the death penalty. Right. Which was uh, after previously legalizing abortion, that is to say, legalize child murder <laughs> and then abolish uh, the death yeah. penalty, right? Uh, because uh, you're uh, writing here, and I was smiling because uh, I, uh, I was already old enough to uh, be conscious about this particular aspect. After taking power, the National Salvation Front behaved like Santa Claus. Any social category that wanted a pay rise received it, irrespective of the economic consequences. As a result, the National Salvation Front gained popularity. Most people were very happy with their increased salaries and did not want to ask the new authorities about their role in the revolution. Exactly. Uh, so basically bought off the public opinion. It was opinion. not very difficult to give to the people a better life than in the Ceausescu regime because <laughs> the Ceausescu was so bad, the life, that uh, just a little bit of more... Uh, yeah, just leaving people alone and give them a little an extra shekel and that's already good enough. Yeah, to... and in fact, uh, the National Salvation Front was popular because gave pay rise... Mm. Uh, Abolished censorship somewhat-ish, definitely much better than a year it, before. It was not difficult. It was an improvement in the quality of life of people mm. and uh, uh, the majority of people didn't know about the revolution only what they saw in the television. It was only the state television at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the state television supported uh, the Whomever version was in power. Right. Uh, the version of the National Salvation Front. Mm -hmm. And then people which are informed mainly through the television believed exactly what they saw on television. Uh, alternative was not very much. It was not... Uh, ch uh, censorship was abolished. Mm -hmm. But who were... Uh, all the... Uh, old newspapers were run by uh, uh, people which were uh, uh, used to follow the orders of the Communist Party. Mm. And those people 
almost naturally uh, follow the new Fell in line uh, with the masters. New power. Right. Right. And they were from the Communist Party. They, even without uh, being forced, mm. many of them, the majority of them, uh, supported the new, new regime, the National Salvation Front. Mm. And uh, afterwards, after some months, started to appear uh, new newspapers. Mm. Uh, but uh, the majority of the printed press was also in the majority uh, for in the favor of the National Salvation Front. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we held a different conversation uh, well, earlier today, but the, obviously on different dates on YouTube, about uh, COF-19, right? about the Wuhan flu. And you were saying there that there's, there's quite a few things in common about how the Wuhan flu is now being covered even globally with how the Romanian revolution used to be covered and sometimes still is covered uh, today. What are the common elements? You know, being born and educated in a communist regime, I can be, I can have empathy about the way a communist regime think and act. And I can have empathy uh, with the Chinese Communist Party. Mm. I can understand how upset they were mm. when uh, uh, mass demonstrations started in Wuhan. Mm. In, uh, 2019, mm -hmm. there were big demonstrations, people throw stones to the police and uh, it was a danger that this kind of demonstration can spread to other Chinese provinces. Mm -hmm. Also in 2019, uh, there were big demonstrations in Hong Kong with mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people which were against the, the imposing law. the Beijing authority mm -hmm in Hong Kong. And then the, I can understand that the Chinese Communist Party needed a, so, a quick solution to stop the unrest of the people. Mm. Because uh, not acting can, can have a result like in Romania. It started in Timisoara, which is... Uh, and then it spread in all the country. Mm. And probably they were worried. Mm. And uh, their solution was to invent the fake pandemic from a simple virus which they found it in the Wuhan laboratory where they have a big virology lab, mm -hmm. one of the biggest in the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of virologists. Their job is to study viruses and uh, they found a new virus which is not uh, very different than the old viruses which they already no, mm. but the Communist Party uh, took this opportunity to claim that this new virus is very dangerous and they need special measures. People should be uh, 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 under house arrest. Uh, in under house arrest, mm. it was a lesson mm. to the people in Wuhan. You dare to challenge the authority of the Communist Party, now we give you a lesson, we put you on the house arrest. Of course, for the outside world, putting 11 million people, how much they are in Wuhan, in, under house arrest, it seems that it's a something very dangerous, it should be something very, very dangerous with this virus, this, mm -hmm. uh, such an extreme measure. Mm -hmm. But in fact, for the Communist uh, Chinese party, That's nothing. the real danger was that the mm. unrest of the people in Wuhan will spread in the rest of China and then the Communist Party can lose uh, power. Mm. And uh, balancing uh, pro mm. and against, they the found economic cost of yeah, the shutdown is an was economic acceptable. cost, but it's acceptable mm. if you can count the people in Wuhan and mm. we can stop the unrest, we can enforce the control of the people in all the China with mm. Uh, contact, tracking, contact tracing, contact and, tracing, uh, surveillance camera. Mm -hmm. This is not only in Wuhan, in all the China they mm -hmm. develop uh, in Hong Kong also. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, instead of telling openly that there is an anti-communist uh, movement in Wuhan, mm -hmm. they say we want to save people uh, from mm -hmm. a, a very dangerous virus. 
so dangerous that people are falling off the streets. Yeah. They just die instantly, don't they? Yeah, it was such footage that you, you still can find on the internet where people are just falling abruptly from in the streets, mm. which never happened in other parts than Wuhan. Mm. But this was just a stage for propaganda to claim that this is a very dangerous virus. And I think uh, those uh, images uh, made uh, people from other countries to enter in panic, mm. to think that this virus is indeed very dangerous. And uh, uh, this is why they started to copy the measures that the Chinese Communists took in China. Mm. But the Chinese Communist Party took in China this measure for completely non-medical purposes, mm. only for political purposes. Non-pharmaceutical interventions, literally, in the case of China. <laughs> exactly. And afterwards, after the, uh, the other governments took such measures, which, of course, uh, make grave damages, mm. they cannot... Uh, scale them back. Scale really. them back because they will look like foolish. Mm. If a, a politician which took such a measure, which mm. gave them and say, oh, I was fool, mm. I made a mistake, then mm. his political career is finished. Mm. Mm. And then all these politicians should follow the same path mm. because they cannot back up. It's on the same issue with... Uh, um... And they have political reason mm. to continue the... Mm the hoax, mm, the charade, a separate uh, political legion that they had the Communist Party of China. It's also to keep power, but via votes. Uh, right? Via votes, but they cannot uh, accept that they made a mistake, because mm. it's a huge mistake. It's not mm. a small mistake, okay, mm. uh, the, uh, uh, the people will forgive you because it's a small... No, this was a huge mistake to mm. lock down people to make so many... Wasn't it as a result of a sustained propaganda, because there is a... Um, reason to believe that the uh, agents of the CCP uh, tried and to a certain extent obviously succeeded, although not... Uh, oh, it, for, for the CCP... The, the, the lockdown propaganda, I mean. The to, CCP was very pleased to see that mm -hmm. other uh, mm -hmm. countries are I'm following sure its example because then uh, nothing uh, was exceptionally what the CCP done. It was just, look, everybody in the world is doing like us that means that mm. uh, we are uh, we did the right thing mm. it was exceptionally for them to mm. uh, uh, for the ccp it was e even easier to cover up the uh, uh, exactly the suppression it, of the protest movement yeah maybe they i don't know i don't know exactly uh, there, there are several um, threads several group of interests which mm. impose this propaganda mm. and uh, <laughs> Uh, the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. tried uh, to sell its products from long time ago. For example, we have in 2009-2010 the so-called swine flu. Mm -hmm. Also a pandemic, right? Uh, which was also declared a pandemic by the uh, WHO. WHO. And uh, they tried to make panic in the world in some places they succeeded, in some places not. It was not su such uh, successful like COVID, mm. but they still made the billions of dollars mm. selling vaccine which proved useless afterwards. Mm. Either useless or even some of them outright and, uh, harmful. They were never punished, mm. not, neither the politicians mm. who accept spending of the money of the, mm. the people for uh, such mm. useless uh, vaccine and uh, uh, took very costly measure. Uh, and uh, all the pharmaceutical industry remain with the gains. And this mm. encouraged them to uh, do it again. Mm. This or, is why or, for or, after or, the COVID we need to punish those responsible because else they will start again. Mm. After COVID-19 they will start COVID-21, COVID-25, COVID uh, or maybe COVID they will find a new... A every, new every other five or ten, usually ten years is better. Of course, because uh, viruses Enough are making forget. mutations mm -hmm. and uh, it can be a new, a, a, new, a new one new virus can be found in each year mm -hmm. just to, to proclaim, uh, proclaim it uh, as a very dangerous is a problem mm -hmm. and to convince the people and uh, <laughs> what I can say in 2019 in October mm -hmm. uh, John Hopkins University mm -hmm. in United States 
Yeah, held the, you're talking about Event 201, right? Exactly. Right. Uh, it was organized Event 201 mm -hmm. by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and mm -hmm. by World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. in which they, they discussed theoretically what we should do in a new pandemic. Mm -hmm. And they already made the plan how to... Uh, and this plan included also the manipulation of the media. Mm. It included the overflow of all media channel with uh, news mm. uh, which uh, support the policy of the government and included also the censorship of a uh, person who, uh, who disagree. Who disagree. Mm -hmm. And also included uh, making contact in advance with uh, opinion leaders, mm -hmm. including uh, church you, leaders. Church leaders, YouTube or, uh, personalities, NGO NGOs, and uh, uh, others to support the policy of authorities. Mm -hmm. And this was already planned in this event 201. Mm -hmm. And when this uh, new COVID uh, pandemic started, mm -hmm. They use also this plan, mm. I don't know, separately with the Chinese Communist Party, in agreement with the Chinese Communist Party. Or just simply uh, coincidentally primed oh, to each they other. They already had the script. Mm -hmm. Just use it. Mm -hmm. Now is the opportunity. We, we already discussed about, oh, this is the moment to use mm -hmm. what we discussed. Something. Six months ago. Oh, right. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, in fact, uh, without changes, it probably will not succeed la as much. Mm -hmm. What other, other good things they do? They didn't use the the word flu again, mm -hmm. because in the swine flu they mm -hmm. use the word flu, mm -hmm. and uh, while it it still scared a lot of people, but because flu is an old uh, disease which is known, mm -hmm. it was not enough scaring, mm -hmm. and now they a invented flu, a new, completely new word, COVID. Right. So yeah, it is a new well, disease. Well, it is different. I mean, you know, it's just a, in 2009 it was just a flu, bro. And now it's just a cough, bro. So, you know, they are different <laughs> in a way, aren't they? Uh, the, sim the reason I'm asking about uh, cough 19 in relation to the Romanian Revolution is because uh, even in uh, your book that you wrote ab about, uh, uh, about the uh, SARS-CoV-2, right? Uh, you also say that the, there, there are similarities in terms of how the public is being primed to fear. So right in 1990, exactly. uh, we, we did have in 1990, early days of 1990 in and the final days of 1989, stay indoors because there are terrorists outside. Exactly. Right? Stay indoors and don't question the government because the government knows, knows how to what deal with the problem. And then eventually we found the original footage about what the government was doing in those days and they had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> None of them had any idea yeah. about the, what they're doing. Um, will, will we get the chance this time around to see original footage from the government, let's say from, I don't know, March the 20th? <laughs> there are several government, each has its own uh, footage, but mm. uh, I, I don't know if we can find the footage with the discussion inside the Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> that would be interesting to watch. That this be, was, uh, it will be very interesting. That would have been very interesting to watch. I'm, su I'm, I'm sure Xi Jinping, Mr. Xi Jinping, uh, comrade Xi Jinping, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, would never release such. Uh, why do people believe these kinds of things? Why, do, why did the people believe that they were being under attack by terrorists? Why did, why did the Romanian people believe that? Uh, why do people now globally believe uh, such things? With a? fear you can manipulate people because it's probably in the human nature to, if you, uh, with fear to be very cautious and uh, prefer not to take risks. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. if you tell to somebody is a risk for your life, mm -hmm. that person can be easily scared mm -hmm and then will not question and will not uh, uh, analyze in details all what is told. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is how things work. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are professionists. They uh, refine the way to manipulate people mm -hmm. during time and it's coming better and better. Mm -hmm. it's becoming better they and have better. psychologists to mm -hmm. study. Right. Uh, just like with uh, the 19th cough, uh, which of course gave uh, rise to all sorts of, um, how should we call them, conspiratorial narratives, 
some of them probably closer to the truth, some of them outright nonsense. The same was the case with the 1989 revolution. Uh, in 1989, not just here, but all over Eastern Europe, because it was very close to each other, right? So the Berlin Wall falls two months later, there's big igloo here, then there's the round table in Poland, and then there is the first free elections in Hungary, in fact, even slightly earlier than that, these first free elections in mm -hmm. Hungary, uh, gave rise to all sorts of conspiratorial narratives. Most, uh, a lot of people believe that these were, must have been necessarily coordinated. But as it's the case with 1989, you yourself know even better, many of them were not coordinated it necessarily. Was it, enough, it was enough for the people in Eastern Europe to see that the Soviet Union will not interfere in mm. their country anymore with military power. Like they because did in 67. Because in 56 uh, in Hungary, 56 when they started Hungary, the revolution, right. mm. then the Soviet army crushed it. Mm. In 68 in Czechoslovakia, they also started the democracy movement and the Soviet army crushed it. In 89, uh, with the retreat of the Soviet Union from Afghanistan, mm. and with a new policy of Gorbachev, mm. uh, people from Eastern Europe understood that the Soviet army will not crush mm. a democracy movement with, if it, it, it will start. Mm. And then they, uh, they, this g gave courage to them. Mm. And uh, then how it started. Uh, uh, and this is why the similar condition gave similar uh, results. Mm. They started to have courage because they already don't like the communist regime because mm. uh, there are a lot of reasons no, not to like le legitimate reasons <laughs> to dislike <laughs> communist regime. Yeah, of course. The, those regimes were imposed by force and without democracy, without free election, and without the consent of the government, without the consent of the people. Yes, mm. and uh, afterwards they uh, prolong their uh, rule by force and by uh, um, cutting all alternative. Mm. But when people say, we can try to change something because Soviet army will not come to crush mm. the movement, they, uh, uh, they acted. And also the power of the example. You see in one country, for me, we in Romania, we saw what happened in uh, East, Germany. East Germany, in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary, in all those countries, and this gave us ca courage. Mm. Even if in the Romanian press nothing was told, it mm. was not uh, written in the Romanian press that uh, Berlin Wall uh, was had fallen, uh, right? Had fallen, but we heard about it from Radio Free Europe. Yes, but you know, uh, for instance, my family was living very close to the Serbian border, and the Yugoslav television broadcasted live the fall mm -hmm. of the Berlin Wall. So while the Romanian press never talked about it, you know, some of us had actually got the chance to see it live. And of course, we told other people, but, you know, there's yeah. no more Berlin Wall. And then the, the Hungarian uh, ethnics living very close to the Hungarian border, they saw on the Hungarian TV that the first free elections were due to be uh, organized. And of course, they told their Romanian friends and neighbors that, look, uh, you know, things are coming. Uh, so yeah. even if the press said no, I guess in a, in a very similar vein uh, with uh, all of the conspiracies uh, related to COVID 19 right? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's a very dangerous disease. And then, you know, uh, I contracted the disease and I told a hundred friends that, look, I contracted the disease is nowhere near as dangerous. And then someone, someone else got the same thing. And even if the press said, no, 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 you have to stay indoors because otherwise you all cough to, de to death, you know, more people are like, hold on a second, I coughed. It's not really that bad. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing, a word to what mouth I believe, spread of the... In some countries, including Romania, they gave to the people with cough, mm. cough 19, mm. they gave some medicines which are making them sick. Mm. Or at the very least, uh, accelerate. Oh, and, uh, uh, they gave, at the beginning, they gave Caletra, mm -hmm. then, uh, then they the cancer Caletra, they gave Grandesivir. Mm. You read the prospect of those uh, medicines, you see the a lot side of effects are side look, effects. Look pretty much like a cough. And I, I, I think many of them suffer more from this medicine mm. than from the cough. treatment was worse but than the disease. But a person who suffered very, he had cough, received those medicines which made him sick, and then this person think, oh, cough is really a bad mm. disease. But in fact, he, he suffered more from the medicine than from mm. cough. Mm. And it's, uh, it's this, uh, th those kind of person are used uh, for uh, 
propaganda for others. Mm -hmm. And what, what very, very strange. I think many people are suffering the Stockholm Syndrome. For example, look at the uh, official data from Koch-19 mm. at Wordometers. You see each country is daily updated mm. how many deaths you have. Mm. And you see uh, the countries with the most repressive, uh, repressive measure to fight against Koch-19, they have the biggest number of deaths mm. com uh, uh, com at one million uh, inhabitants. Per million inhabitants, right. For example, Belgium is uh, number number one in the world. I think. Uh, number one, they have right. very tough lockdowns. Mm. Uh, even bigger than Belgium is the state of New York, because mm. if you take USA as a whole, it's lower the mm. number of deaths per million than in Belgium. But if you take the uh, state of New York, mm. is the biggest number of deaths in the planet, mm. which means the government of New York and the uh, medical authorities of New York are the worst in the planet. Even if they receive billions of dollars, they have very well... Uh, Well-funded healthcare system. Sure. Well-funded. And in Af Africa, mm. few, few deaths from COVID-19. Mm. You see, and what is strange, people in New York, like their governors, they mm. vote for, for the same government, which uh, uh, made New York the worst place in the planet to mm. fight in the fight with COVID-19. I don't mm. know what achievement has this government in other problems. Maybe mm. they are wonderful in, mm. in other problems. But in COVID-19, if you look at Wordometers, the mm. rate of date, mm. New York is the worst of plan mm. in the planet. People like, like authoritarian leaders, which uh, tell them that they saved their life. Even if, if the very data, this is called Stockholm Syndrome. It's very similar with our, I mean, uh, lately it has become a little bit more flattened, but uh, as I'm sure you know, but I'm mentioning this for those who are watching, uh, especially in the late 1990s, we would have had quite a lot of our fellow citizens who would say, you know what, maybe it was a mistake to take down the communist regime. Things were better in communism. We had a lot of these kinds of Stockholm Syndrome uh, fellow citizens in our country as well. Don't know exactly their number. They are very active on Facebook and in... Uh, well, today there are very few of them, but I'm talking about late 1990s, early 2000s, when openly nostalgic um, uh, political forces were still g gathering very uh, high amount of votes. Of course, today there aren't that many of them. Uh, because, you know, time heals everything. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that this kind of Stockholm Syndrome for an authoritarian regime, be it temporarily or even for a long period, is it, it may indeed be something of a human nature because uh, we've seen it with other repressive regimes that are not uh, medical related. Yes, it's very difficult for me to, to for know instance, exactly I met, how I many I met in the Soviet Union, someone visiting, uh, well, in the former Soviet Union, present-day Ukraine, uh, someone visiting one of uh, NKVD's slash KGB's uh, prisons, Lonskoho prison, today in Lvov, Ukraine, uh, openly discussing that, you know what, yeah, the NKVD was kind of terrible with uh, running these kinds of jails and whatnot, but at the end of the day, the USSR was better. There are uh, multiple reasons. For example, in uh, Why former do Soviet Union, this? Uh, this was a, a kind of Russian nationalism. Mm. And uh, people which... Uh, uh, are attracted by Russian, nation, uh, Russian nationalism. They uh, consider that it was good that Russia uh, controlled all Soviet Union. It, it was the second power of the world, which is not anymore. And mm. it has a nostalgia for this. Uh, for the status, the geopolitical status. Yeah, of we have a great country and we don't have any more look. Is, uh, mm. Very similar I think, with some of, some of those in Romania, right? And also, uh, I think in China, mm. the Chinese Communist Party also is... They're playing uh, the same card. The right? card of Chinese nationalism. Mm -hmm. Or not only the communists, because... Mm. Uh, but this card of Chinese nationalism is part of the, the CCP Chinese strategy. CCP, yes. And yeah, because uh, at the end of the day, on December the 31st, 2020, the official narrative of the CCP was that, look, we defeated COVID-19, therefore, 
the Chinese model is superior to the Western model because look how they're scrambling with it in the yeah. West and look how terrible it is. Whereas our great country obtains new status as yeah. a world power. Look, we can even defeat this coffer. That's how great our yeah. model is. So the more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> is that really the lesson of life? In some uh, areas, yes. Mm. It's, uh, they reinvented. Mm. The communists reinvented themselves. Even in Romania, they reinvented from the, with the National Salvation Front, which is not openly communist. I think it's better to have an openly communist party, to know exactly which are the communists, mm. to be honest, to tell that uh, I am against the uh, forbidden the communist parties to run in an election. Mm. I prefer to have an openly communist party to say yes, we are communist, we are honest communist, and know exactly who they are. Then they just easily uh, nonsense with uh, uh, they just infiltrated other parties which mm. are not openly communist, but uh, in fact they are uh, following communist strategy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where can people buy your books? This book can be buy uh, uh, in Romania and few libraries, a few mm. uh, bookstores, bookstores. Mm. Uh, in Timisoara, in Ezotera. No, on the internet. On the internet, on my site, Marius Mioc WordPress.com. Mm. I have a page called uh, Curs de Vânzare, Books for Sales. Mm. It's in Romania, on my site. Mm. And in that page, I have a list with all my books which I, I sell, including this uh, English language big book and a lot of Romanian language books. And you also have something published in French, is that also available? It's the same, it's the same book which mm. is uh, translated mm. in, in, in French. French. Right. Do you uh, plan to write some more uh, for uh, an abroad audience, for, for a foreign audience? Don't know. Uh, I plan to write more books in Romanian language about the Romanian Revolution. I don't know if I will uh, write a new book in English language because this is what I wrote is good for a foreigner which probably don't have very much time to go into details of Romania. This is what a small book is good. Don't know if I will any I also my English not so good that I can uh, write uh, very easy in English. Mm -hmm. I see. Marius, thanks a lot for agreeing. Once again, thanks a lot for agreeing to making this interview in mm -hmm. English. Uh, thanks a lot for have, ma making time to meet us. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers. See you around.